Master. Spin. I jump back, do it again. Ninja, go! Ninja, go! Come on, come on, come on, until we get away. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you started that off with your wonderful you know, rendition of um, Joseph and his amazing technical dream. So, so I feel that, yeah. I feel as though I needed to, uh, to to raise the bar somewhat. Come and then I, the come musical episode. <laughs> Like, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> unleash the Wuhan thumb of death. I won't mind, but when I came up to the other day eating an apple, you kind of hissed at me and told me to go away. <laughs> it's really very true. <laughs> to, to be fair, every time my wife buys apples in the shopping now, I, I basically come out in hives. <laughs> no sooner than he arrives home, our Billy manages to get on the wrong side of the bar, stop it, right? Our Billy. <laughs> our Billy. I'll tell you something. Our yeah. Billy. Our Billy. Come here. Your tea's getting cold, our Billy. <laughs> what is it, Dad? Dirty pot. <laughs> right. <clears throat> this is a typical ending of a lot of Asian films from the 70s and 80s. The original director of this movie had obviously seen Fist of Fury, where Bruce Lee's character Chen dies at the end of the film. Now, with Fist of Fury, that ending suited the film, as Chen made a noble sacrifice to protect his friends and the legacy of his old master's martial arts school. But, when you have a film where the hero gets gunned down at the end, just because, it really does end the film on a dampener. And it actually makes me, as the viewer, think, well, you know what? That was a complete utter waste of my time. I don't think I'm going to be... I don't think I'm going to bother watching that again. And if you think about it, if you think about the, sort of the, the, the number of films that have actually, just to go off on, on a small digression, if we, if, if we can. Of course. You know, we're, 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 we're 50, 50 minutes into the film. Actually, that's not too bad for us. Usually we start digressing around about two or three minutes in. So it's taking a quarter <laughs> we'll of an hour. Two minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we're getting into, uh, into the quarter of an hour mark. If you think about movies from, uh, movies, movies from the 80s, that could have been much, much different if they had stuck to the original idea, like the main character uh, sort of dying at the end of it, Rambo, Rambo mm -hmm. first blood. In the book, Rambo kills himself. Mm. And that would have ended the film on the real. And down. that would have ended the real film on the real getting down though. But then again, you know, we wouldn't have had Rambo two, we'd have had Rambo three, and sort of the fourth one. Um, Kevin Smith's Clerks. The original ending for Kevin Smith's mm -hmm. Clerks was Dante being killed in a in a botched robbery. Yes. Because because he because Kevin Smith at the time felt that oh hang on a minute it's an indie film somebody has to die in an indie, in, a, in an independent film and Dante was going to um, sort of die really really sort of pointlessly in his hands. We want to add clerks too. And you know the thing is he wasn't even supposed to be there today. No, he wasn't. <laughs> clerks too is really good. But could at the ending have involved? Oh, sorry, this is your bit still, isn't it? <laughs> it's my bit. Uh, could the ending have involved Billy killing the big boss and either giving himself up to the cops without getting killed, or have Billy secretly leave town before the police come looking for him? This could have easily been edited to change the ending to a more upbeat one, and it would have certainly made for a better ending than this. Right, ninjas. Right, ninjas. First of all, the whole explanation session about so sort of when Gordon's speaking to Billy and he's telling him about, about ninjas and the ninja code and what have you, he doesn't actually mention the word ninja. He actually talks about samurai. And sort of their honour and what have you. Ninjas were used as assassins and spies. That had nothing to do with samurai. Also, they genuinely wore black. Not pink, not, not pink, yellow, not, not silver, red, yellow, not which, Hulkamania colours. That kind of like gives the impression that ninjas worked in secret at night, where most of these uh, ninja battles in the kind of like the golden the ninja part of the, this movie actually taking broad daylight <laughs> in a park somewhere, <laughs> probably in Wales. And and the strange thing about this is that there could actually be a good film in in amongst all of this crap, just waiting to get out. There could, 
You just need to... Uh, you just really, 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 really need to look very, very hard at it. <laughs> and then probably get drunk. The title of the movie doesn't even make sense either. Who exactly are the Ninja Squad? Where is the Ninja Squad? <laughs> there isn't a Ninja Squad. You know, I'm expecting to see a team. Uh, I'm expecting to see a team of specially trained ninja warriors kicking some ass with a title like that. I thought this is what we we're going to see when Billy said that he wanted to join the police force at the start. Oh, let's see a team of ninja cops. Is the Ninja Squad the poor guys that Ivan keeps killing left, right, and centre? Because if they are, they're not really a very good Ninja Squad. Yeah, well, that's it. If he's killing other ninjas to make himself the ultimate ninja, then one wonders why this film isn't called the Ultimate Ninja. But then you realise, oh shit, there's another Godfrey Home movie that's called The Ultimate Ninja. Oh god, I think I might have found a segue into another review. No, you really, <laughs> really, really haven't. Uh, the Ninja Squad actually uses a load of re-edited footage from a Filipino movie from 1984 called Hatulan Si Baby Go Augusta, which according to Google, Google Translator is Judge Baby Augustia, which again doesn't really Make no, sense. Make any sense whatsoever. The movie was directed by Reginald King, also known as Ray Malonzo, who was involved in the making of a lot of kung fu and karate movies, including loads of the phony Bruce Lee clones that were Ooh, plentiful throughout the 70s. Really? Yes. Um, so we might end up coming across more of his films Ooh, later. Greatest cinematic crimes ever ever perpetrated. Bruce exploitation. Now there's a future episode. No, that definitely, that actually definitely is not just to basically laugh at, but also to basically say this is a terrible thing and yes. should never have happened. How dare you? How fucking dare and, you? And anybody that was ever involved in Bruce exploitation should actually hang their heads in shame. Well, funnily enough, he did actually go on to have quite a successful career after this, not as a film director, but as a politician. And he actually had three consecutive terms as the mayor of Caloocan City, one of the most popular cities in the Philippines. One of the most prosperous ones as well. So, uh, you know, if it gets you the work. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, mate. Because after watching this film uh, twice, I might add, I watched this twice. <laughs> you made me <laughs> think I needed to watch this film Twice. <laughs> well, I need a drink. There's two films in it, so technically. Yeah. <laughs> However, we'll come to the bit at the pub at the end. It'll just be you, like just <laughs> drinking pure vodka and telling me to fuck off. Oh bless! It was a bit of fun. It was a bit of fun while it lasted. Um, the, the, I did the Ninja Squad about an hour and a half. There's many, many other examples of his oeuvre, shall we say? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not somewhere that I want to go back to, to be honest with you. I, I don't think I've ever been that disappointed by a martial arts film um, <laughs> um, since the time that my dad brought home a video copy of Ten Magnificent Killers. <laughs> and, and, uh, yes, I'm, and, I'm familiar with that one, yes. And, and came back, like, can I just say something, right? This is a film that my dad had absolutely no idea what it was about. Saw it in the video shop, brought it back, put it in. Me and my dad and my brother were watching this. I mean, this is before, right, like, you know, early teens, maybe, something like that. It was really like Saturday when my, when my mum was out, because there was no way on God's great green earth that my mum would have sat down and watched their magnificent killers. But anyways, as the, as the credits were going on and introducing all the actors, etc. Here's my dad rocking up and basically saying, Oh, it's such a thing. He, he's really good. Him. He's got lightning feet, that man. <laughs> as, if, as if he knows. And then the film ended and I just turned to me. I think I can remember turning to dad and said, Dad, have you ever seen that film before? And he just went, no. Dad, it was shit. And he went, I know. I think the Kung Fu and like the ninja movie genre is very much one for the dads. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of yeah. the ones where your, your dad or your father-in-law in my case, or your, or your granddad, I say it. I, mean, I, I say my father-in-law, it was him that lent me the double DVD set that had Ninja Terminator and Ninja Dragon on. What the titles? Ninja Terminator, Ninja Dragon. I am the Ninja, Ninja Terminator. The Ninja Squad. I mean... I think as I said in the, in the main review, fair play to him. Yeah. He had an idea, he got them made. And he obviously made a fair bit of money, so, oh god, broke even. He made well that. over a hundred within the space of a decade. Yeah. So most he, of them so, were Richard Harrison, yeah. most of them with the word ninja in the title. He retained at least around about 100% of the profits as well. Yes. Um, 
if so it is made Joseph Lal, unless Joseph Lal is another assumed alias of Godfrey Ho, he could very well, he could, well, he could, he could be, be, he could be, they could be one and the same person.